Okay, so let's go over a few options for online learning. And what we're gonna go through in this little presentation is some tools, not only for connecting with students or, or colleagues, uh, but also sharing some, some content as well. So first thing I wanna have a look at is doing meetings and webinars or just uh, live classes. Uh, so Zoom is the most obvious choice here. Easy to use, it works on your phone, it works on PC, it works on Mac, so that's awesome, no problems there. The only thing is there is a limit to 40 minutes on the free version that can sometimes very easily get exceeded and you may get cut off. So if you get cut off partway through, reestablishing everyone back into a meeting and again can be a bit of a pain. Uh, so there is paid options for that. Otherwise, just talk quick. Uh, so once you've done your meetings and stuff, you still need to keep in touch. And most will probably just say, let's just use email. I, I would suggest something like Slack. Now, basically what Slack is, uh, it, it basically combines text and email and file sharing and, well, GIF sharing as well and puts it into, into one package. And I found when I've run online classes that email can get extremely busy and extremely messy <laughs> very quickly when you're dealing with multiple people, 10, 20, 30 students. Uh, so something like Slack is an, an easier way to keep things organized about who's in a conversation about what, who needs to know about what conversation. So inside Slack, you can make channels specific to a certain topic. So uh, when I do Slack, uh, Slack rooms, basically I'll make up a channel that's dedicated to talk about uh, a certain lesson. I'll make up a channel that's dedicated to only videos uh, about a certain topic. And it just keeps certain things on track so everyone knows what's going on at any one point. So again, Slack is free, or there's free levels and there's paid levels. In the free level, uh, basically the limitation is you can only see the last 10,000 messages. Now that's quite a few messages. And the other limitation is you you can only have up to five gigabytes worth of files, whatever those files are, Word docs, uh, Mastercam files, video files, etc. cetera. Uh, and we will come back to that a little bit later when we talk about some file sharing. And Slack as well works on your phone, works on PC, works on, uh, on Mac, so no problems there as far as uh, compatibility goes. Next up, let's talk about some of the stuff that Google has. Uh, I'm pretty sure we're all aware of the, the apps and uh, uh, features that Google offers. Um, but how can we use these in, in online learning, distance learning, and, and keeping in touch? Uh, so myself, what I find myself using most is Google Sheets. Uh, Google Sheets is the same as Excel, uh, Microsoft Excel, so it's basically a spreadsheet uh, software. The key thing here being these are, are shareable, so I can create information or data in a sheet, specifically data about due dates for assignments, uh, completion, uh, documentation about assignments, even marks. If you want to do marks over sheets, you, you could. But as soon as I update this Google Sheet, everyone who has access to that sheet will see those updates happen in real time. Google also has an offering called Google Classroom. Now, I will admit I have not used Google Classroom much. I dug into it a little bit when it first came out and created a little test class uh, it does seem very capable, uh, very streamlined and intuitive. So I think here that the, the main thing is that you can create assignments, give feedback, attach documents to these assignments, post notifications, and all that fun stuff. So it definitely looks like something that could be useful if you want to put the time into learning that piece of software. So next up, probably the, the part most will be struggling with, and that is content creation. So we need to somehow create lessons to share with our students. Uh, it's one thing if we're in a, in a, in a meeting through, uh, through Zoom. It's one thing to just sit and talk back and forth. Uh, but most likely, you're going to want to get some sort of screen recording software, especially if you're doing tutorials or instruction on, on Mastercam or, or SolidWorks or any other piece of software, whatever it may be. So here's some options, free and paid. If you're looking for free, I would suggest going with this OBS, Open Broadcast, uh, Open Broadcaster software. Uh, there's other options as well, such as Screencast-O-Matic. Uh, this Screencast-O-Matic, as far as I know, I have not used it. There is a recording limit, and I think it's like 10 minutes or something. So that's not much time, and you'll keep getting cut off and having to restart, and that could be a bit of a pain, especially if you're in the middle of a, of a good flow. 
Uh, OBS, there's no limit there. It's very good software in that regards. And again, both free. Uh, other options, uh, paid options, Camtasia. That's what I use for my screen recordings. It works great. It's got a built-in editor as well. TechSmith also makes what's called Snagit. And with Snagit, you can do screen grabs in video as well. And they have another option called Screencast, which we'll get back to a little bit later. Camtasia is a little, little pricey. Go to TechSmith's website to get an accurate pricing over there. I'm not exactly sure of the pricing. There is a discount for education if that matters much at all. Adobe Captivate, same sort of thing as Camtasia. Uh, again, it's even a little bit more expensive than Camtasia, but if your school wants to pick up the bill, hey, it's probably great software. Now, along with that screen capture software, now you can just open up the software you, you want to teach in, if that's Mastercam or whatever it may be. Uh, there may be times when you want to do a little whiteboarding session, kind of along the style as, of, a, of a Khan Academy type of tutorial. Uh, so he uses a, a software called SmoothDraw. And I did a tutorial a little while back on tool length offsets, which I used SmoothDraw as well. Uh, if you are using the SmoothDraw, you can use your mouse. However, it does work better if you have a drawing tablet, such as a, a Wacom, or a, I think this is pronounced Huion. I'm not really sure the pronunciation there, but drawing tablets do work a little bit better and you get a little bit cleaner output, unless you've got terrible penmanship like me and it looks like I used a mouse anyways. <laughs> but uh, So with this smooth draw, as you've got this up on the screen, you'll use your screen recording software to screen grab that software as you're doing your tutorial. Next up, let's talk about editing. Now, this is not a step that is required, but if you want to make a tutorial that's highly polished and watchable, uh, you're going to want to do some editing. You're going to want to cut out some dead air. You're going to want to maybe make some transitions between different shots, uh, maybe add in some uh, some music or, or whatever it may be. So a bunch of different options here again, from free up to paid, and in the paid world, from cheap to expensive. Uh, as far as free for Windows, this Hit Film Express is probably one of your best bets. If you're doing uh, editing on Mac, iMovie is probably the best thing to go with. If you're wanting to buy some professional level stuff, then Adobe Premiere is probably what you're going to be after. But also keep in mind, if you're buying screen capturing software, they will most likely have built-in editing capabilities. That's usually why they cost some money for those, those paid screen capture softwares. So now that you've got your video captured, you've got it edited, you now need some way to share it with your students. Only a few options here, there's not much out there. The most obvious choice, of course, is YouTube. Word of warning with YouTube, make sure you set your sharing options correctly depending on who you want to be able to see the video. So back to Slack with our videos, you can upload your videos directly into Slack. You are limited to that five gigabytes of data. Uh, you'd be surprised how much video you can put up inside of five gigabytes. And even at that point, as you exceed or start to get close to that five gigabytes, you can just start to remove some of the older videos, which probably were already watched anyways. Vimeo is a paid option. It's kind of like YouTube, except for you have to pay to have an account and upload. So maybe not the best choice. And then coming full circle here back to TechSmith uh, with their screencast. Again, their screencast is different than Screencast-O-Matic, as confusing as that is. Uh, this screencast, you can upload up to two gigabytes in the free version. You're again limited to two gigabytes of bandwidth with that as well. So if you've got a larger class, you know, 10, 20 students, you're going to blow through two gigabytes of, of bandwidth rather quickly. So it might not be the best option there either. So probably YouTube or uh, directly into Slack there. How about evaluating our students from a distance? What do we got here for choices? Uh, if you just want to do a quick little game with the students that provides instant feedback, Kahoot is a good option. It's a little handheld uh, game that you can run on your cell phone or a computer. Basically, it's kind of like um, a trivia game. So basically, a question pops up, you pick the right answer, whoever gets it the quickest gets the most points etc. So it's kind of fun stuff, quick and easy, instant feedback if you know a topic or not. Uh, if you want to get a little bit more involved and actually do some grading, Class Marker is a good option here. You can create online quizzes and then upload an answer key and have those quizzes automatically marked for you. If you're wanting to go beyond multiple choice tests and quick little games, then you're going to want to exchange files back and forth. And that's where I would 
again revert back to using Slack. Um, exchanging of files in Slack is very easy. Uh, typically, I'll have a student submit a file to me. I'll go over it, make some corrections, maybe send back a video about what needs to be fixed, send back a fixed document, or maybe just ask for the corrected file. Student sends the corrected file back over, and away we go. Some online resources and courses. So first up here, let's look at the CTE Coalition. Uh, this website has got a ton of links to different uh, resources. Uh, Cam Instructor, us, we're on there, Tooling U, uh, Haas Skills USA, and NC3. Some other options for online stuff. Sandvik has got a pretty nice metal cutting course that you should definitely check out or have your students give a look. Uh, lots of good information over there. Those guys in the yellow coats, guys and girls in yellow coats, always do uh, fantastic videos and provide a lot of information on cutting tools. Uh, so fantastic stuff. And lastly, let's talk about YouTube. Yeah, there's a ton of information on YouTube, a ton of videos. It's fantastic because anyone can upload to it. It's also very bad because anyone can upload machining videos to it. So with that, there's a lot of bad machining videos, bad information about what to do, how to do it. Uh, some of the videos are even just, there's nothing really to take away in the long run from the videos. There's nothing educational in them. Uh, you're just watching them for, for flair and uh, cinematics, I guess you would say. So with that, you as a teacher, you need to be a curator for your students. You know, let them go down those rabbit holes on their own, finding those, those, those videos. But I would recommend what you would consider to be high quality, uh, educational, uh, entertaining still type videos. So those type videos are not the ones that you're going to get at the very top of the search list when you search for machining stuff in YouTube. Uh, some of them you might. Uh, so I've got some, some channels listed here. Uh, this old Tony is a pretty popular channel. Uh, it is entertaining. The guy's pretty funny, but he still has really good information in his videos. He knows what he's talking about. Ox Tool Co. is the same way. Uh, Edge Precision. I think Edge Precision has got... This guy has got to be the best machinist, I think, on, on YouTube. Uh, unfortunately, he uses his spree. Uh, I don't know if we can do anything about that and get him over to the Mastercam side, but... Uh, awesome videos. I think he runs uh, Mazak Indirex. Does some of the craziest parts you'll ever see. College Machinist is great. If you like old machining videos, old manual machining videos, lots of good stuff there. Uh, Suburban Tool Inc. Uh, Don, I forget his last name. The guy knows, I think, absolutely everything about grinding ever. So fantastic videos there. Sanovic Cormont, we've already talked about then. Pearson Workholding, fantastic videos there from Pearson Workholding. And always great videos from Mastercam and Haas. And down at the bottom of the list here, which we shouldn't be, we should be up at the top. But of course, great videos always from caminstructor.com. Hopefully you found this list useful. If you have any comments, please let me know.